It all started five days ago, 10.30 Monday morning. The Lone Tree Lions, the black and gold, came into Des Moines to start play in Class A, unbeaten, ranked number one. And here we are five days later. Lone Tree is still here, still unbeaten, still rated number one, and in championship play against the Tigers of Dayton. And that's the way Lone Tree made it here. Little Rock, 61-46, fell early. And then in the semifinals, it was Palmer, 67-42. And though there's quite a discrepancy in those scores, interestingly enough, in both those games, Lone Tree had trouble, at least in the first half of the ball game. In the second half, they were a very dominant team. Dayton, on the other hand, had no trouble. Took care of uh, Sydney in their opener, 71-52. Hedrick fell 62-42. Again, no sweat for the Dayton Tigers. They're rated number four. So we have the makings here of a very, very interesting basketball game, the first championship of this 1985 series. And Frosty, we're not actually going to see a lot of contrast. We would think because Lone Tree is so big and their uh, tournament experience from last year, they still like to run. So does Dayton. Yes, I would expect that this is going to be full use of the 94-foot court out here. Mark, you're right when you say it started five days ago here at uh, the final eight of Class A, but actually it started back in February with 165 Class A teams. That's the biggest class of the four-class state tournament that we have out here. For Lone Tree, they've had the burden of being rated number one all season long. Are they unbeaten or unbeatable? Now, the team that was rated number two at the start of the season was Dayton, the team that they faced tonight. And Santa Fundamentally for Dayton, their first time ever to the state tournament. It also could be their last because nothing for sure yet, but they're talking about a cooperative program with one of three other school systems, and uh, Dayton could become a middle school and thus uh, maybe not have a chance to come back. But that's still a little iffy. Well, we have history in the making here. Has there ever been an A class in Iowa basketball history, Mitch? All right, technically, this is the new class. This is the A class. Now, we had class A, AA, and AAA, but when they go to 4A, this is the A. Then we go to 1A, so technically, this is the new class. So we have history in the making. We will have, for the first time, a Class A champion. Lone Tree is the Iowa, the Southeast Iowa champion, 14-0 in their league. The Iowa Heartland champion, Dayton, 10-0. So these are championship basketball teams, teams that have been tested all the way up and down the line during the regular season and in tournament, and certainly here, and are looking forward to giving us quite a ball game. I think what's of interest is the fact that Lone Tree obviously has the size. In Pekosh, they have a six foot seven senior who sparkles. He's the number one scorer and rebounder coming into this tournament. He is the number one scorer with 57 uh, points, the number one rebounder with 36 points in the two previous games of any of the classes. He's immense. Todd Kruger is up there at six foot eight, Mitch. To counter that, uh, Ross Anderson, who's nifty at six three, but still six three, is the tallest that Dayton can throw against them. Right, but that's two inches taller than Palmer had yesterday and Palmer gave him a go for about three quarters. You better believe they did. That did not come as easy as the final score seemed to indicate. It did in the closing stages, but not early. So the buzzer calls the teams to their respective benches and coaches, and that calls us down to Bob Euchre courtside for the introduction of these teams. It's time for state tournament basketball. This is the championship game in Class A making their first state tournament appearance. From Dayton, the visitors on the scoreboard, the Tigers. The home team on the scoreboard was at this tournament last year. They were defeated in the first round. Tonight, they find themselves in the finals. The Lions from Lone Tree. And now, let's meet the reserves for the Dayton Tigers. Number 21, Brad Lambert. Number 55, Lee Kinsey. Number 45, Mike Hartquist. Number 33, Rob Danielson. Number 43, Lee Stevens. Number 25, Trent Faulkner. Number 51, Randy Kalahar. Number 11, John Deal. Number 15, 
Tom Cooney. And number 53, Dennis Esperson. The assistant coach of the Tigers is Jerry Kinder. And now, here are the reserves for Lone Tree. Number 24, Jeremy Shanklin. Number 40, Tig Johnson. Number 10, Danny Bontrager. Number 30, Brian Less. Number 12, Brad Musser. Number 32, Paul Bevins. Number 52, Scott Lutz. Number 42, Gary Feldman. Number 14, Tim Stebrill. And the assistant coaches, Rockney Foreman and Kurt Countryman. And now, here are your starting lineups. At forward, for Dayton, number 35, Dan Blair. At forward, for Lone Tree, number 34, Neil Forbes. At forward, for Dayton, Number 31, Luke Fleener. At forward for Lone Tree, number 44, Todd Kruger. At center for Dayton, number 41, Ross Anderson. At center for Lone Tree, number 54, Andy Packard. Guard for Dayton, number 23, Scott Swanson. At guard for Lone Tree, number 20, Bruce Kout. At guard for Dayton, number 13, Darren Nelson. At guard for Lone Tree, number 22, Philip Ford. The coach of the Dayton Tigers is Emmett Cooney. And the coach of the Lone Tree Lions, Doug Hoffmeister. Your officials for this ball game, the referee, Harley Leaders of Neola. The umpire is Robert Johnson of Minden and the auxiliary bench official, Bob Aldis of Iowa City. Presenting our colors tonight, the Marine Corps Junior ROTC unit from North Tech High School in Des Moines. At midcourt, Becky Morgan Arnold of Des Moines to sign as the Voices of Valley from Valley High, West Des Moines, under the direction of Chuck Clark, sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see my 
by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? Thus, the stage is set for the Class A championship here in the state of Iowa for 1985. Two ball clubs that have won 47 games between them, losing only one. That is sparkling indeed, meeting out here to settle it. Interestingly enough, we had another unbeaten and rate, top rated team in the state in 3A earlier today, Burlington. It ran into a West Waterloo team that was extremely quick and extremely capable, and as a result, a 93 70 defeat went to Burlington, which now moves into consolation, and it's West Waterloo and Carroll Kemper for the 3A title. Lone Tree, the Lions, Dayton Tigers looking for the upset. Let's see what happens as we're just underway. The tip is controlled by Lone Tree. That's Bill Forbes out at the point handling it. And we look at a man-to-man -man defense. It's Anderson looking after Pekosh. And it will be Blair's job to stop Cougar. They go inside to Pekosh. He waits and he gets caught across the hand. And he got caught by Blair who left Cougar to get a hand. And of course, that's one of the guys they've got to keep in the ball game. He and Anderson have to be able to stay in, fouls or not. Take a look at it in there. You'll see an undersized guy trying to battle. He's got to catch the ball before Kruger or Pekas put it up high, and he took a swipe at it and got the hand instead. And conversely, obviously, you want Lone Tree to keep Pekas alive and Kruger because you take those people out of there, all of a sudden you come down to uh, life size. And that uh, opens door a little bit more on. for the Dayton Tigers. Though Anderson is 6'3", he nevertheless is a superb athlete. He's a four-year starter. Uh, he's been around. He's a baseball pitcher. He just uh, he knows how to handle himself, and uh, he's going to work very, very hard, and he's a leaper. I think they're asking for a delay. The lights aren't all back on. They dimmed the lights uh, for the flag uh, presentation, Mark. We have a lot of lights around the outside of the antenna. There they come back on. And this is new lighting, isn't it? Yes, this year. You bet. Third team All-Stater a year ago, and of course this fellow's already signed to play Western Illinois basketball uh, next year at Western Illinois at Macomb. Averaging 24 and a half during the regular season, he has scored 57 points in the two games here, 24 in the opener and 33 against Palmer, so he has had a splendid uh, tournament. Left-hander. Yep. 
He's 68% from the line, 64% from the field. Oddly enough, Lone Tree has had a little bit of trouble getting untracked in each of the ball games thus far. They had, they had a fellow by the name of Steve Forbes at that school who played a lot of basketball, but Pekosh has apparently eclipsed his records. Gets one out of two. So the first scoring of the evening takes place. Lone Tree out on top by a score of one to nothing. As we take a look at Darren Nelson venture down to the baseline and up with the rebound is Pekosh. Well, that answered your question. If you're wondering what kind of a delay game you might see against this big timber, nope, they put it right up. Right. And you saw Lone Tree come right down. Along with this is Neil Forbes handling the basketball. Gives it to Pekosh, goes out on top to uh, Phil Forbes, his cousin. The Forbes are cousins. They go inside that scout, giving the ball a quiver, and he is stripped by Darren Nelson. Here quickly come the Dayton Tigers. And that's Nelson with his second shot. That one doesn't go, and the rebound on the floor. It's a traveling violation. As you saw Fleener go diving after it, they'll give the ball out of bounds to Kruger and line backcourt. At Darren Nelson that heads in there, he gets the Courage Award. We've watched him in this tournament uh, so far. He likes to lower the head and drive. He's only 5'9", but he's a number two career scorer at that school. So the kid can put it in the hole. Neil Forbes into Kruger. Going over the top of Blair. It's on the rim, but not in. And there's Ross Anderson picking up the rebound. It goes down in turn. Cleaner with the shot attempt. You saw it rejected beautifully. And a foul is going to be called on Ross Anderson. His first, each center. And he is very important to keep him in the ball game also. Boy, that was an intimidator you saw up there. Watch this reject up in the air. Bang. Came right back at you. They put the brand of the basketball right on your forehead. Six and a half minutes left to play in the opening frame. Bill Forbes with the right hand working against Nelson. Drops it over to Neal. They try to go inside. Anderson saw it coming for Pekosh, picked it off. Obviously, Anderson can play any position. Darren Nelson. Trying to draw the foul. Yep. Scott Swanson. Swanson plays some pretty tough basketball. Anderson 16 and a half feet away. The rebound is picked off. Now that's the farthest out they've had Anderson work in this tournament thus far, but the tall timber's the reason. Bring it around, that's Cout handling it, gives it to Kruger. He'll go from about 18. And the rebound is picked off by Luke Fleener. The long pass down court to Blair. He gives it out to Swanson. He'll try it from about 11. And the rebound comes to Kruger, lost it, retrieves. Gives it over to Cout, and here we go into the East Court at Des Moines. Kruger had real foul problems in the game with Little Rock. Actually, he didn't have much playing time. Neil Forbes handling the basketball. And he comes out in turn to Phil. Pulls up the fingers, denoting the offensive set, working against the man-to-man. -man. They go inside to Pekosh on the rim. Anderson having position, takes the rebound with 5-10 remaining. It's still one nothing Lone Tree. And Dayton is only giving them one shot on that offensive board and one shot only. As Darren Nelson's third shot. That doesn't go as well, and here again comes Lone Tree, the Lions, the black and gold. The shot attempt by Phil Forbes. His first scoring of the evening. He's averaging seven and a half. He had eight in the Little Rock win. He had five in the win against Palmer. Dayton's now been three and a half minutes, and they have not yet broken the ice. Three to nothing. There it is. And now Nelson on his fourth attempt hits it. It was just a matter of time. He's a 50 percenter from the field. And the left-hander as well, his first scoring. So it's three to two. Sometimes that first olive out of the bottle is the hard one. Bill Forbes getting it to count. Always looking inside for the big people. Pekosh on the side. This is Pekosh left out of his hand. Retrieves it, gives it back to Forbes. Crowd thought he traveled. And it goes out to Phil Forbes. He'll try it from about 15 and a half feet away. Forbes gets his own rebound, drops it off on the far side to Cout. And they set it up again in a hurry, working against the zone. They go inside. Pekosh rejected by Anderson. Fouled on this side, Two. however, by Fleener. Two. You know, you'll hear the crowd sound like they boo, but they're saying Luke Three. when they do. You take a look at it in there, and you'll see Fleener, number 31, from the back. 
That's the third team foul on Dayton. We've had none on two. low three. Pekosh was on Relax. the line before. He made Rewinded. one out of two, as we told you. He's a 68 percenter. That was Coach Doug Hoffmeister sitting there with assistant coach Rockney Foreman. Over 1,500 career points, over 1,000 career rebounds. What a career he's put in, huh? Hey, hey. Give him two out of three. This lone three bunch was runner-up uh, in their One. class in the state One. football last fall. Lost 13-0 in the championship game to Schleswig. Well, while we're at it, he leads in career blocks at the school as well. Three out of four for Beck Osh and for the second time a three-point lead by Lone Tree. Five to two. 350 remaining to be played in the first quarter. Darren Nelson on this side going inside to Anderson up over the top of Kruger. Nifty. He Real is nifty. very smooth. 61% from the field during his career. So that is just excellent shooting, obviously. Five to four. His first scoring tonight. They go inside the Cougar. Slapped out of his hands by Nelson. Out of bounds. The ball will go back to the line. They're doing everything they can to deny the ball before the big guys can get it. We've got a timeout being called on the floor with the score. Lone Tree five. Dayton four in this Class A championship. Now this word from your local station. All right, there we have one of the Tigers. The Tigers against the Lions, or the Lions against the Tigers. Call it what you're a lot of facial graffiti, and it breaks me up. Frankly, I'll tell you, I get a kick out of it. I, you don't very often find Tigers that are red and white, yeah. uh, as the Dayton Tigers are. Tigers usually wear uh, orange and black uh, as school colors, but these are red and white Tigers. So it's five to four, Lone Tree by one. It'll be their basketball. Kruger will be the trigger man down at the east end of Vets Auditorium here in Des Moines. Another game to follow. That'll be 1A Nashua and Grundy Center. New champions in all the classes this year. Won't be any repeaters. That's Kruger getting the ball out to Phil Forbes, who's playing with his cousin Neil off on the left wing. This is the pass and the foul by Darren Nelson. He'd like to have that one back, fouling Pekosh. That'll be the fourth team foul on Dayton. We have none on Lone Tree in high school basketball. You shoot on five. You can see the Darren Nelson going in there again. I mentioned a few moments ago, obviously, Emmett Cooney, the coach at Dayton, is going to try and deny the ball before they get it. If they get it, they go up in the jump shot. There's nothing they can do. Kaut going inside. Slapped out of the hands of Pekosh back to Kaut. He'll try it from 16 and a half. The rebound is saved from going out of bounds by Ross Anderson. Gives it to Swan Seam. Here come the Tigers. Oh, when Dayton shoots, they're shooting for the lead. This is Anderson getting it with the left hand. Four points for Anderson on a couple of field goals, and for the first time, Dayton by one. The fact that Lone Tree is rated number one, I would guess the neutral crowd that's here for the second state championship game tonight between Nashville and Comanche are swinging around to the would-be underdog, Dayton. Pekosh comes out, gives it to Kruger, who's come out. We talk about crowds. This tournament's played to 66,400 this week before tonight. That's a 2-3 they're operating against. Kruger from without, about 15 feet away. And you saw the big guy bang at home. That's his first scoring. Fouled out of the earlier games. He had 21 points, however, in the win over Palmer. So the two big guys really put in a day's work in that. The lights went out again at Veterans Auditorium. And I think we have a bit of a delay down there. All right, with the timeout on the floor, with the score, Lone Tree 7, Dayton 6. Now this word from your local station. Okay, we are back. The lights are back. Darren Nelson scored, uh, making the score 8 to 7, Dayton by one for the second time. However, on the turnover, the ball went back to Dayton. Now you saw Dayton retrieve it one more on the turnover. This is a shot attempt that is partially blocked. That was cleaner on the attempt. That was Pekosh on the block. And as a result, the ball belongs to Lone Tree, the Lions. So we hope you're caught up with a minute and a half left to go here in the opening frame. Eight to seven, Dayton. Kaut going inside to Kruger. They collapse around him. It doesn't go in on the shot. And let's see. We're going to whistle it on who? The guy on the floor? Yep. That's correct. And that's five on Dayton. We still have not had a foul call on Lone Tree, a team that sometimes does get quite a few fouls. Uh, they have not had a team foul called in this hat quarter. And that's Blair's second personal foul. So you shoot on five in high school ball. 
Those that are seeing high school basketball on television for the first time, there is no Almost offensive down shot down clock, but there is a 21-foot line out five, there. Right? That's right Emmett Cooney you're looking at on your screen. Otherwise, Anything from beyond that 21-foot uh, line, three points. We have Tim Stebrell, a six-foot junior, checking in, averaging nine points a ball game. Let's go. He uh, scored go. three straight baskets go, in the opening uh, win against Little Rock when he inserted him on that game. He scored six one points. One. He had six points as well in the Palmer win. Kids call him Otis. That's the nickname. For Kruger, Kruger on the line. He'll Discord. be going to Southern Illinois on a basketball one. scholarship. He's an honor roll student. One. So uh, Illinois gets Pekosh and Kruger, huh? Right. 81 percent are from the line, 50 percent on those two tries. He has a total of three, eight and eight. That's our first tie. That's Darren Nelson. Almost lost it, retrieved it, lost it. However, it is picked up by Stiebel. So here come the Lions, heading east. Sounds like a zoo, lions and tigers. That's Pekosh putting it up, and the fellow on the floor picked up the personal foul. That's Darren Nelson. That is his second. And he fouled Pekosh once before one, earlier in the three. ball game, but they weren't in the free throw situation at that time. They are now. I don't think Dayton has that much bench. They've got a couple of kids that have been starters for four years, and they could be getting into foul trouble. Uh, but what else can you do when you're playing that uh, big ball club? That's all you can do is play hard and hope you get away with it. Here's the lefty, honor old student, as well as excelling, as we said, in basketball and in athletics generally. That's the rebound is picked off by Blair. We're under a minute as Darren Nelson comes down and he is fouled by Phil Forbes. He went up in the air, looked for a sky hook, didn't find one, and came down on the back of Nelson. Boy, did he draw that one nifty. One, he heard footsteps behind two, him, two, knew it wasn't one of his teammates, and they put the brakes on. First foul on Lone Tree came with less than a minute to go in the first quarter. So the basketball belongs to the Dayton Tigers again, and here's Darren Nelson with the basketball moving to the far or north sidelines. That's Anderson from 16. The rebound goes to Pekosh. He looks down court, nothing happening, so he drops it off and turn to Phil Forbes. Comes up to Stiebel, 20 feet. Ross Anderson. They have not been able to bust it out and go off on a fast break. Lone Tree has been able to get back quickly in most instances. Nice pass in there to Anderson, lays it up with the left hand. The rebound taken off by Pekosh. He clears it out to Neil Forbes. He comes down in the rush down that north side. 20 seconds left to go. Stiebel, 16 feet. Nelson with the rebound. Nelson will try it from about 14, right on the money. Three field goals for Nelson. He drives the bus on this ball club. He's what makes it go. Three field goals for Nelson. He has fouled out both of the previous games. Cougar at the buzzer, and that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Dayton 10, Lone Tree 8. We'll be back after this word from your local station. All right, take a look at Darren Nelson. He's wearing lucky number 13 right there. This kid's a real competitor. He's only five foot nine, up in the air over everybody for this jump shot. Now, he had a jump shot in the district final. Nesco, last year's state runner-up, he hit it to beat Nesco as the gun went off in the district final. He has six in the opening frame, Mitch. Four for Ross Anderson. On the other side of the ledger, Andy Pekosh has a total of three, and so does Todd Kruger. So low scoring first quarter, 10 to 8, Dayton out in front by two, line. its biggest Just lead incidentally. They trailed by three on two occasions. Lone Tree had scored 16 in their first games uh, out uh, against uh, Little Rock and uh, Palmer in the first quarter. They got only eight this time. It's saved, but it goes out into the hands of Fleener, and as a result, the Tigers have the ball, and the Swansea tries his luck. Rebounded by Blair, he passes the ball out to Nelson. He'll go from 17, bangs it home. Give him... Eight points on four field goals. He's averaging 14 and a half, and he's averaging 14 and a half on his career as well. So he is a splendid shooter. Seven and a half left in the first half. 12 to eight, a four-point spread. Dayton's biggest lead. Handling the ball is Stiebel. That is Phil Forbes. The rebound goes into the hands of Luke Fleener. It's short. Pekosh on the rebound gives the ball off to Forbes. Both teams are only getting one poke on the offensive board right now, but I expected Lone Tree to dominate both boards. Stiebel looking in, finds Kruger. He'll go out over the top of Fleener. The rebound goes to Ross Anderson. A Again. kitchen style. Look at that kid motor. We're under seven. That's Nelson. Coast to coast. He came hurrying. Five field goals for Darren Nelson. And it's 14 to eight. The spread now is six points. Biggest lead of the night by either ball club, and it's enjoyed. 
by the Dayton Tigers. Ranked number four against number one Lone Tree. This is Peckoff. The big guy just would not be denied that time. He has a total of five, his first field goal, incidentally. There's the long pass down to Anderson. He moves it out to Swanson. Anderson looks in, gives the ball to Fleener. With the left hand, he got it. Fleener's first score, he's averaging 16 and a half, but not in the tournament. That's on the regular season. He's averaging about 13 in the previous two games in the tournament. Ball slapped and saved into the hands of Anderson, doing the heroics with Fleener. So momentum has switched to Dayton, apparently here in the early going of the second frame. We're coming down with six minutes left to play. Darren Nelson out in front. Working against a man-to-man. -man. Give the ball to Swanson. Over to Fleener to Anderson, over the top to Peckoff. Six, and they want to the time out. Indeed. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Dayton, 18, Lone Tree, 10. Now this word from your local station. Just prior to the end of the first quarter, it was tied at eight all. And since then, Dayton has scored 10 unanswered points. It is now 18 to 10. A team that's won 24 in a row has been behind uh, uh, before. They were behind to Kyoto in uh, the district tournament. They were behind to Palmer in the first half here at the state tournament. By two, you're right. The ball tried to pass in and slapped out by Darren Nelson. They'll give the ball back to Lone Tree. Well, that Darren Nelson stepped into that passing lane, almost picked that one off. Duck Hausmeister has uh, 91 and 33 record coming in, 734 batting average as coach with Lone Tree, which is too shabby. That left hand put up by Pekash a little bit too hard. The rebound is picked off by Blair. He comes quickly down to Swanson, who tries a bounce pass over to Anderson. Lucky. Went astray, but he picked it up. Yep, both to Nelson. 515 left in the half. Eight point spread, biggest. Nelson, 15 feet away. Like shooting a free throw, and he counts more. He's got a dozen. Boy, Dayton's got the momentum right now, and this crowd's helping him. By 10. Bill Forbes against Nelson. Stebrill working against Swanson, gets it into Pekosh. Pekosh over the top of Anderson with that left hand, and he gets his seventh point of the evening. 20 to 12, narrows it to eight. Stebrill in the front court for the Tigers at Dayton. Pekas that time down showed a shot away from the basket. He'll probably have to use that in college as a forward rather than playing with his back to the bucket like he has been. It was Phil Forbes who got his hands on Darren Nelson as he tried to drive the lane and was assessed the foul. And that on Phil Forbes, his personal foul, number two. They had a couple to waste. He has the only two fouls on the whole ball club in this game. That's uh, Emmett Cooney right there, native of Marengo, Iowa, not very far from Lone Tree. He's coaching Dayton. All right, that's Darren Nelson, and that's Neil Forbes working hard to stop him, but he can't. That's a total of 14 seven yeah. field goals for the little guy. As we said, he's 50% from the field, so the kid's a shooter. 22 to 12, it's up by 10 for the second time. Biggest lead by either club. With that left hand again, Pekosh, they keep going to that well as well they may. He has a total of nine. All the jitters of those opening minutes are gone now. They're just playing. So it's narrowed again to eight. Nelson tries to feed it under. Beautiful pass. And you saw him hit Fleener right on the numbers. He has a total of four. Who would have the courage to alley-oop against a Pekash and Kruger? Dayton, that's who. For the third time by 10, Dayton. Nice move down the lane. Slammed a little bit too hard there by Phil Forbes. The rebound comes off to Swanson. Looks like a 3-1 breakout. They give it over to Fleener. Fleener, his third field goal. A total of six. Swanson with the assist. 26-14. It is now 12. Getting interesting. They go inside to Kruger. Kruger, big guy, puts it up, and Kruger cashes in. He has a total of five. Dayton, Iowa is known for rodeo. That's uh, what they're famous for. They beat another rodeo town, Sydney, in that uh, opening uh, game and uh, took out a good Henry club. They're playing. Darren Nelson continues to sizzle. Wow, 16 he's as he's hit his eighth field goal. And his percentage is remarkable. He missed his first three, remember? I don't know how many beyond that he's missed. Since that time, he has been almost perfect. For the second time by a dozen, they go to Pekosh. He misses it, he'll try again. They don't foul him, they give it to him. You bet, when he's inside with that ball and up that tall, they might as well let him have two yep, rather than three. kidding yourself, right? The shot attempt goes astray and out of bounds. It was attempted by Fleener, came up short. The ball will go out of bounds to Lone Tree, which is putting in Bruce Kaut, a starting guard. We have a timeout. We do. 
Timeout on the floor with the score. Dayton 28, Lone Tree 18. And now this word from your local station. Well, that net at the uh, west end of the arena here has uh, been smoking as a result of Darren Nelson shooting, just to show you how impressive it is. He scored 16 already. He had 18 in the Sydney win. He had 19 against Hedrick. He's averaging 14 and a half. He has 16 here this evening, and we're in the second period. They better tie a can on him in a hurry. Hey, Mark, at halftime, people here are going to be surprised. They're going to meet two great collegiate basketball players. They don't want to give any secrets away. The George Clarkson Award, but they're both here. Outstanding. And we had a pretty good candid look at Nelson. Oh, how he has sparkled. Neil Forbes is guarding him. We'll see who picks him up. Right now it is Pekosh getting the ball out to Kout. Kout shot is rebounded by Kruger. He'll force it up. Well, he that muscled that one back up with that size. There's did. nothing Dayton can do there, but hope they don't foul. So it's down to 8, 28 to 20 with 225 left to play. Darren Nelson, look out. Is that kid out? You know, it appears that we're going to now have a Dayton artillery barrage and hand-to-hand -hand combat inside as far as Lone Tree is concerned. I think what they better do is put Pekash out on him at 6'8". Maybe that'll do something. 30 to 20. It goes back to 10. Bill Forbes. Inside the Pekash. He fakes Anderson beautifully. Anderson left his feet. He got it, and he was fouled. I think they're going to whistle it against. They are. Swansea. And Pekash's basket will count. He has a total of 13. He'll get a free throw. Big Andy Pekas. Last year, all he wanted to do was get on the television. His dad was having open heart surgery at University Hospitals in Iowa City. Wanted to get to the television round, and they got upset by Little Rock. And uh, dad is here, incidentally, coming off that surgery to see this one tonight. Well, that's good news. Three out of five from the line to Pekas. Three out of six, he has 14 points. And they've narrowed that gap down to seven. With two left to play until intermission. 30 to 23, Darren Nelson. In the front court, drops it to Fleener, back to Nelson. And he was fouled by Forbes. Forbes is going to put in a full half of work chasing that kid. But Lone Tree has fouls to waste at this particular right. point. That's only the third team foul. Now, you watch Darren Nelson. He's going to get some contact. They tried to reach in with the left arm. But it still doesn't put Dayton on the free throw line. Significant fact. No question about it. Handling it is Swansea. Looks like a 2-3. Seen both zone and man-to-man. -man. That's three if he hits it. He does it, and Kruger picks up the long rebound with a minute and a half left to play. Here come the Lions of Lone Tree. Neil Forbes gives it to Pekash. 15-foot attempt is not good by Phil Forbes. He tries to keep it alive by tapping it, but he's tapped in the hands of Ross Anderson. He is fouled back there by Kruger, who chastises himself yep. for the silly foul. Because he had terrible foul trouble, three in the first half, one in the fourth quarter in the opening game against Little Rock, and that was not a smart foul. He knew it was not. It's the fourth team foul. Now the next time, Dayton will be shooting. But there's only a minute 18 left. That's the first personal on Kruger. There you see a very intent coach pointing the way for his Lions. The pass underneath to Anderson. He puts it up with the left hand. A nice big arch to get it up over that tall timber. It didn't fall that time. Those guys intimidate you. He changed his shot a little bit. Sure. Over to Peckard. Some body contact. Offensive. Yeah. And give uh, Nelson credit for putting on a little bit of an act. He went flying. Just gave up his body. But he got a, he got a bump from Peckard. But Pekosh is pleading his case, as you can see with the official saying, now, wait a minute. Pekosh hasn't had a foul problem this year. A year ago, he did have a foul problem when he fouled out of that uh, Little Rock game. Unanimous all-conference, three years. Going as Mitch Toga to Western Illinois has his first personal foul. That's Fleener with 45 seconds left giving to Nelson. Look out. Again, he had to change his shot, as Frosty mentioned. Once you get into those tall people, if you modify it a little bit, there's a chance you'll miss, and that's happened. Last couple of shots. Pekosh trying to get it up. It goes, and he was fouled. On the floor, picking up the foul was Swansea. His second personal foul. Pekosh now has a total of a 16. Two, three from the back. One. And it's 30 to 23. The difference is seven with 33 seconds left in the half. One. One. Here comes the big guy. 68 percenter from the line. Four out of six so far from the line here tonight. So his free throw shooting has really started to move. 
He has a total of 17, 30-26. Four-point difference. The Tigers with the ball and the lead. They'll take it down for that last attempt. Nelson with 10 seconds in to Anderson. Fleener gives it a look. Now the three-point attempt by Nelson. Air ball. Rebound underneath, put up by Swanson. At the buzzer, it's over. That's the end of the first half with the score. Dayton 30, Lone Tree 26. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Intermission, 30 to 26. Lone Tree was down by 12 on a couple of occasions in that second quarter. They battle back now to within four. They were leading by three in the early going in the first quarter. In the second quarter was Dayton out hustling uh, Lone Tree by a score of 20 to 18, and that accounts for that difference of 30 to 26 here at halftime, a sparkling half by Darren Nelson, some superb field goal shooting. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium in a moment for some important awards after this pause for station identification. And we're going center court now to Mo Kelly of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have your attention for a moment, please? We have one of the finest high school basketball tournaments in the nation. And in order to have that type of a program, you have to have many, many workers doing their thing, their job, to make that tournament a success. At this time, we'd like to cite an individual who has been a tireless worker for many years at our state tournament. He's been mainly involved in the television production, the telecasts of our tournament games, but also has been very prominent insofar as the selection of all tournament teams and our sportsmanship awards. At this time, he'll receive a plaque from Mr. Bill Turner, the gentleman with the beard who is the producer of our state tournament telecasts, and Bernie Sago, executive secretary of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. The man we're going to recognize at this time, and we'd like for you to give him a nice hand for all that he's done for many years here at our state tournament, a big congratulations and thank you to George Dorrington of Cedar Rapids. At our tournament each year, it's our pleasure to present the Governor's Physical Fitness Awards. And to do that honor, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Scott Wood of Drake University. Dr. Wood. Good evening. In 1973, the Iowa Governor's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports was established to promote and support fitness, sports, health and recreation programs for all Iowans. At the request of Governor Branstad and continuing an 11-year tradition, the Council has selected seven organizations to receive the Governor's Award tonight in recognition of their outstanding programs last year. Here, to publicly acknowledge these programs and to present them with their awards, the Governor of Iowa, the Honorable Terry E. Branstead. And now, and now, the award recipients. For the outstanding elementary school physical fitness and sports program, the Rudd Rockford Marble Rock Community Schools. Accepting the award are Donna Kuhlmeyer and Becky Jo Minders, physical education teachers. For the outstanding secondary high school physical fitness and sports program, the Vinton Community Schools, Beth Kirkpatrick, Junior High Physical Education Instructor, Jay Struvey, Junior High Physical Education Instructor. For the Outstanding College or University Physical Fitness and Sports Program, Wartburg College, Dr. Richard Walker, the Department Head of Physical Education. 
the organization receiving the award for the outstanding fitness and sports program for the handicapped is the Van Eaton School of Area Education 7. Accepting the award are Dr. Daryl Dirks, the principal, and Mr. Joe Whittle, the coach. The, outsta the outstanding private organization, Physical Fitness and Sports Program for 1984, was the John Deere Fitness Club of Waterloo, Iowa. Rick Langford, the president and founder, and his wife, Cindy. The Iowa City Parks and Recreation Department receives the Governor's Award for having the outstanding Community Physical Fitness and Sports Program for 1984. Dr. Fred Riddle, Chairperson of the Iowa City Parks and Recreation Committee, and Al Cassidy, the Superintendent. Finally, the award for the outstanding Employee Health and Fitness Program goes to Life Investors of Cedar Rapid, Iowa. Cheryl Payton, Assistant Director of Corporate Communications, and the individual who established the Governor's Council in 1973, the Chief Executive Officer of Life Investors, former Governor of Iowa, Robert D. Ray. This concludes the Governor's Fitness and Sports Awards presentations for this year. The Governor's Council wishes to express its appreciation to Governor Branstad and to the Iowa Boys High School Athletic Union and to KCAU-TV for allowing the council to present these awards at this time. Thank you. Since 1957, the George Clarkson Award has been presented to the outstanding amateur basketball player in the state. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you, accompanied by Barb Turner and his daughter Jan, George Clarkson to make this presentation. Thank you, Mo. <clears throat> this is the 29th year for this award. Thank you. And this is given to the outstanding amateur basketball player in the state. The nominations this year was Jay Prescott of Westmar, Michael Payne of Iowa, Greg Stokes of Iowa, and Barry Stevens of Iowa State. Now, now since we've had two outstanding men, and I believe you when I say outstanding men, when you look over their stats, I think the coaches felt the only way we could be honest with both of them to make it a co-award. I'll tell you a little bit first about Barry Stevens. Barry is co-captain of the Iowa State team. He ranked second at the all-time, this is the big eight, all of them. The only one ahead of him is a fellow by the name of Tisdale. He's still a pretty good ball player, isn't he, Barry? Now, he scored the most points ever by an Iowa State ball player, 2,190. And honorable mention on the AP and the UPI All-American. And he was, of course, an outstanding defensive basketball player. And he was ISU's most valuable player. Hey. This is for you. Okay, go ahead, Let's get it. Well, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Lord because I couldn't have did it without him. And I'd like to thank all of you beautiful fans out here in Iowa who made this possible. And I'd also like to thank the man here who's, who sponsors this award. Thank you. <laughs> Needless to say, since we mentioned the Cole Award, the other gentleman is to my left. He was the co-captain of the Iowa team this year, Greg Stokes. He played on the gold medal Pan American in 1983. Now he led the Hawkeyes in scoring, rebounding, field goals, free throws, steals, and blocked shots. 
I don't, Greg didn't have to sweep this floor, I don't think. He was the first team all Big Ten. He's Iowa's all time leading scorer for 1,768 points. And he passed, by the way, a former winner of the Clarkson Award, Ronnie Lester. And he even had to retire Greg's number 41. Greg? I'd just like to thank Mr. Clarkson for this, this great award. Uh, I looked at some of the other recipients in the past, and there are a lot of great names on that list. Uh, I'd also like to thank the fans, um, not only in Iowa City, but the statewide. And uh, I also want to say that it's been a great pleasure playing against my good friend, Barry Stevens, for uh, the past four years. Thank you. We'll be back. We'll be back at Veterans Auditorium after this word from your local station. Well, if you ever wonder what a cheap book between two valuable bookends feels like, I can tell you. I'm there right now with Barry Stevens and Greg Stokes. Barry Stevens, who we know about all the great things you've done. What's in the future for Barry Stevens? I don't know. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to keep myself in shape and I'm um, looking forward to the draft. Well, we hope it goes high for you. Greg Stokes, same question to you after all the thrills you've given us. What's the future for Greg Stokes? Well, hopefully I'd like to be able to play professionally. Um, right now I'm in the midst of uh, getting together some information on a few All-Star games that hopefully I'll be participating in uh, later on in April. Well, it's going to be fun to watch that. Barry Stevens, when you think back in NIT and NCAA, part of the thing that turned it all around with uh, Johnny Orr, any one big thrill in your four years as an Iowan? Well, the biggest thrill, I think, it came this year, us getting a bid into the NCAA. Um, Preseason, we weren't supposed to be there, and we worked very hard, and, and our team did a good job, Coach Joe and all the guys, and we were able to make it to the NCAA, and, and that's what we had planned in, in the preseason. So that's the biggest thrill I've had since I've been here at Iowa State. Well, to Greg Stokes, a man that uh, three out of four years went to the NCAA, had uh, a lot of thrills. Uh, Greg, is there one in particular maybe that you'd share with us? Uh, probably the biggest um, thing that I can remember during my college career at Iowa was just uh, being able to participate in Olympic trials and also uh, going to the Pan Am, being on the Pan Am teams uh, after my sophomore season. Well, of course, we're all hoping and presuming that pro ball is going to be uh, good to you and good for you. But just in case it didn't, educationally, what have you picked up in Iowa City? Uh, well, I uh, hopefully uh, plan on graduating in business um, management. I want to get in some kind of uh, management field, uh, hopefully a hotel or a restaurant management. I've always been interested in that area. And Barry Stevens, we're sure hoping for the best for you in the draft and a great uh, pro career. But after that's over, uh, what have you picked up in four years on the campus at Ames? Well, I'm majoring in, in, in business, and uh, I'm looking forward to pursuing some type of um, business, um, a personal management thing. Um, I've been contacted by a few people who, who've given me a little insight on how to start a business. And so um, that's what I'm going to do if, if the pro deal doesn't work out for me. Well, we sure hope uh, it does. Greg, you came to us uh, as an Ohioan. We just think of you as an Iowan uh, right now. How about being a, a transplant? Uh, was that any kind of an adjustment? Um, not really, uh, especially the, uh, concerning the weather. The weather is fairly similar, but uh, it was an adjustment coming here uh, as a freshman, uh, not really being known. And all of a sudden, uh, I even didn't play that much as a freshman. But once you're on a, a Hawkeye basketball team, you're instantly known. And, well. And to Barry Stevens, a Michigander who's uh, we're claiming as an Iowan uh, right now. Uh, Barry, how was your adjustment uh, coming from Michigan to Iowa? It was a big adjustment. Um, it, 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 I was young when I first came here at Iowa State, and now I've matured a lot. And, and um, I've learned a lot being down here under Coach Johnny Orr, and I've met many of beautiful people, and Iowa State has really been good to me. So um, it was an adjustment for me, but the people made it a lot easier for me, and um, it's, it's, been, it's been nice. It's really been nice. Well, Barry, how do you see the future of Iowa State basketball? Well, um, I think they're on a roll. I think, you know, they'll go to the NCAA for the next couple of years. Um, we have a lot of good young players, and we have a lot of good recruits coming in. And um, I think, you know, the biggest step was for us to get to the NCAA the first time. And, and this year, although we lost really quick, you know, in the first round, I think it was a stepping stone, and I think that this is just the beginning. Very good luck to you. Greg, 
Stokes, by golly, you know everybody's rooting for you. Good luck. Uh, thank you. There they are, the George Clarkson winners. Let's go back up to Mark Zellis. Thank you, Mitch, to outstanding young men and obviously basketball talent. Some first half highlights for you now from some outstanding young men who participated in this first half of play. Here is Nelson uh, for Dayton feeding to Anderson. Anderson hits from the corner. And now you're going to take a look at Mr. Nelson coming down and popping one from the side. His shooting was splendid here in that opening half of play. We're going to take a look once again as Nelson hits this time from the key. 9 of 15 in that first half for 66% and 18 points. That's why they were up by 12. We're going to take a look now at Phil Forbes on the other end as he gives to uh, cousin Neil Forbes who in turn goes to Pekosh and Pekosh scores. Now here's a look at Fleener feeding and to Anderson. Oh, I'm a little ahead of myself. Here's Pekosh now with that score. Okay. Now you're going to get a look at Fleener with a feed to Anderson as Dayton gets the score. Anderson on the basket. And we'll be back with the start of the second half after this word from your local station. Dayton out in front by a score of 30 to 26 over number one and unbeaten lone tree here at intermission by four. Dayton led by two at the end of the first quarter. When we take a look at the statistical wrap up you'll notice that the uh, field goal shooting from the standpoint of Dayton was outstanding pushing 47 percent to 38 uh, percent turnovers. Lone Tree three more the rebounds pretty even but look at the free throws and Frosty Mitchell commented on that during the first half six out of nine Dayton never did go to the free throw line so if that were even Stephen that is had they not had any free throws that spread to be ten here at halftime instead of just four so the free throws were a very instrumental part of the first half of that ball game especially for Lone Tree. Both teams are back on the playing court Frosty Mitchell has rejoined us up here after visiting with those Clarkson winners. And we have 16 more minutes of championship basketball left for you in a ball game that's up for grabs, Mitch. All I wanted is become their personal managers, uh, Mark. Both guys studied business themselves. I think they knew what was coming. <laughs> Anderson going up against Kruger. Anderson in the red. On the left as you look. Kruger the taller of the two at 6'8". The tip goes into the hands of Lone Tree, and that's Phil Forbes with it, dropping it to Cout. Same defense for Dayton that they worked in the first half. Same starting five. Neil Forbes along with Phil, Pekosh, Kruger, and Kaut, who's handling the ball right now. We'll set the defense in just a moment as we watch the shot by Phil Forbes. And that's the, the guy that can change the defense because they're playing two on each of the big men. Four points for Phil Forbes. The shot at them missed and the rebound goes to Kruger. And he gives it to Kaut, who's quickly down into that front court, which is the west court here at Vets Auditorium. Neil Forbes looking inside. Kruger isn't free. Working against the zone. I'm we sure have you can see him packing. They're trying to front and back both of the big men. That's got to leave somebody open. Maybe two people. That was Nelson out on front. And then you saw Fleener come out. He's in there with Ross Anderson, Swanson, and Blair. The starting five. The shot attempt by Kruger from the free throw line. He can shoot from there, and that's why he can play college basketball, probably where you'll have to play. Two quick baskets, and guess who's tied? Second time, the last time was at eight. Underneath, Anderson on the miss. The rebound put up and a foul. The rebound was put up by Fleener. He missed it, but he missed it as a result of being fouled, so he'll go to the well and get a couple of free throws. Luke Fleener has a chance to break that ice this half for these youngsters. The kids call him Twinky, incidentally. And Cout has his first personal foul. So here is Luke Fleener, the six foot one junior, number nine scorer in the tourney coming in, and a seven, a uh, 66 and a half percenter from the free throw line. Luke's sister's here in the act two. Katarina, she's a cheerleader. His mom's a secretary at the grade school in Dayton. This is them both playing with a fractured thumb. I understand, Mitch. Doesn't bother him that much. It's been treated and looked after. It's not going to get serious apparently. If it gets whacked the wrong way, obviously it's going to hurt. Lone Tree has been a second half team so far in this tournament. And Neil Forbes listens to Mitch and pops it. As we have three consecutive field goals. And all of a sudden it's 32-30 and we have Pekar stealing the ball. Lone Tree out in front by two is led by three. That was back in the first frame, however. 6.20 left to play here in the third. So they have broken out in a hurry in the second half. Kruger 
Nice fake as he goes up, pops it. You saw Blair leave his feet. Got him up in the air. Open the door for Kruger, who has 11, and right now we have a timeout called by Dayton with the score, Lone Tree 34, Dayton 30. Now this word from your local station. Look there and play back on the Todd Kruger, a nifty. See him fake the man up in the air? That was Luke Fleener. He got up, and then it was just a, a piece of cake right down through the net. Two baskets by Kruger, one each by the Forbes Cousins, unanswered by Dayton. And it's 34 to 30. It was 30 26 at intermission. About two minutes have gone by here in the third. So let's see what the timeout has done for the Tigers as Swan Seam gives the ball over to Darren Nelson, who sparkled in the first half with 18. He carried it. This, of course, uh, Mark, is the new division, technically, as we mentioned earlier. This is uh, A, always been the division of the Darlings, uh, the little people. As far as this school is concerned, Lone Tree has 55 boys. Dayton has only 34. Remarkable. Kauf looking inside. Palmer plays tomorrow for consolation. They have only 17 boys. <laughs> and 15 three, of them dress. In three grades, right? Right. Traveling before the shot, it doesn't go. That was Pekosh with the walk. The ball goes out of bounds to date. That's truly remarkable, Mitch. It's wonderful. And you see some excellent basketball, very representative basketball for those small size schools. And you see some excellent coaching in these small schools. And they grow them pretty big, as witness Kruger and Pekosh. And some others we've seen over the years. Anytime you've got two boys out there that have already signed college scholarships, you know they've had good coaching. Look at Little Rock last year, some nice size. Anderson with the left hand, Pekosh with the rebound. Gives it to Neil Forbes over to Phil. Back to Cousin Neal, 5.15 left to go in the third by four, Lone Tree. Venturing in and trying the 14-footer, rebounding it is Phil Forbes who shot it. <laughs> Little's <laughs> man out there got the rebound. Right place at the right time. Goes into Kruger. Kruger's fade away from 16. The rebound, Neal Forbes. And earlier, as you suggested, each team is getting one. That has changed here noticeably. Pekosh. That's 19 for Pekosh. He's averaging 24 and a half. And the third quarter has not been good to Dayton. We're still uh, almost 4.45 to go. You're looking at Swanson handling it over on the far side, giving it to Cleaner. Now it's underneath to Anderson. Anderson is fouled by Pekosh. He has a second personal foul. Against Sydney, Dayton got 20 in the third quarter. Against Hedrick yesterday, they got 22. You take a look at it, and you can be the referee right inside where the traffic is there. You Six, saw the foul. Six-point lead by Lone Tree, its biggest. They were down by 12 two times in the second quarter. Anderson trying to narrow it with a pair. And this is on the first of two. He's a 78 percenter. As we said earlier, 61 percent field goal shooting average in his career. He was six for six, I think, against Hedrick down there at that free throw line. Number one rebounder for four years at the school. He misses them both. And uh, rebound goes to Pekosh. In turn to Forbes over to Cal. Russ Anderson celebrated his birthday uh, here yesterday. Stolen. Cleaner, Luke Cleaner. And they're back in it. He has a total of eight. 36 32. Four point lead, Lone Tree. It has the ball. That's West here at Vets Auditorium in Des Moines before a nice crowd. Mitch told you prior to this session, 66,000 had paid their way in. Pekosh banging it over that left hand again. He has a total of 21. We're in the high 70s as far as Gate is concerned now. For the second time, that six-point lead, the biggest. The race for the loose ball, and a hacking foul is called on Kruger, and he winces. He knows again it was not a smart foul. That's two of those today. That's what made him wince. He had that agony Why? on his face. Oh, Thirteen boy. foul, lone tree. There has not been a foul on Dayton in this quarter. You can see it right there. The man picks it up. Now Kruger got away, but he got away with one, but he, they nipped him the second time. Pretty obvious against the 2-3. When you're that big, it's pretty hard to sneak a sunrise past a rooster. They go inside to Anderson. He goes over the top of Pekosh with a pretty shot. That's eight for Ross Anderson. And 38-34, it's no the four again. Lone three, Phil Forbes, front court. Couch underneath the Kruger. They saw it coming. They're caving in on him, obviously, and they picked it off, slapped into the hands of Swanson. That was that front and back defense that paid off. Swanson has yet to score. Darren Nelson has scored plenty, but not that time. He saves it, slaps it to the hands of Pekosh, who brings it up to Kaut. Kaut doesn't look like he can go anywhere with it. Let's see what he does. Feeds it into Kruger. A little bit too high. Anderson's on the spot. He moves quickly for Dayton. That was two turnovers in a row. On the far side, Fleener. Ten for Fleener on five field goals. 
There's the press on the backcourt. The ball passed into Forbes. And he starts moving up. 2.50 left to play in the third. 38-36. The difference is two. Inside to Pekash. They strip him of the ball, but they get him on the hand as well. Swan seen. That's the, picked up his two, third. Five, first four, foul two, this three, half on two, Dayton. Two, 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 two. You take a look at it, you'll see that first foul. They had some foul problems in the first half. Two, two, two. Two. Swan yeah, number 23, shot, has been held scoreless, which is kind of interesting. He had seven in the Sydney win. He had eight in the Hedrick win. He's yet to score here. 38-36. And Pekash goes to the line. 21 points so far. Five of them have come on free throws. Big guys and the honor roll student is Family Farms. Coach Hoffmeister said he's the spiritual leader of his team. Six out of eight free throws. They claim he's only playing 75%. He hurt his ankle against Kyoto in the districts. Boy, when he's 100%, he must be dead. I was going to say, you'd hate to see him, wouldn't you? Because he had 24 in the Little Rock win, 33 in the Palmer win. With a bad limb. He now has 23 points here this evening. And it's back to 40-36. The graphic gives you the field goal percentages, and you can see what Lone Tree is doing. The bomb attempt by Fleener doesn't go. The long rebound comes out to Swanson. Nelson. He gets back into the act. That's his first scoring of the second half. He has a total of 20 at 18. That on shot, nine field goals in the first. That shot was there a lot in the first half. They worked on that. He's having to work a lot harder to get it off. Inside to Pekosh. It's home. Credit the assist to Stiebel. 25 points for Pekosh. He's been a tower of strength, and of course, he may well be their career leader in scoring and rebounding. They go to him as often as possible. He right now leads this tournament with a total of 82. That passes to Anderson, knocked out of his hands, picked up by a teammate, however, who stepped out of bounds. That was Swan Seen. He tried to save it, could not. A little bit just thought that he couldn't. The second leading scorer of the whole tournament is Darren Nelson of Dayton with 55. His teammate Ross Anderson has 53. We saw Dayton coach Emin Kubi oh boy. right into that game. There's Rockney Foreman, the other fellow sitting there. Down on the other bench with Doug Hoffmeister. This shot attempt by Stiebro. The long rebound comes out to Cleaner. Down court is Nelson. He gets the bound pass, puts it up. And Nelson now has a total of 22. Cleaner with the assist. Yeah, a big assist by Fleener, but Darren Nelson, at his size, wasn't afraid to go right in there where the big guys play. The difference is two. Lone Tree. Lone Tree has the ball. Stiebel out at the point. Now tries to feed it in. Bad pass, slapped away. Nelson's got it. Gives it down to Fleener. He could tie it. Blows it. The follow-up by Swanson is not good. And Swanson commits the foul. Boy, they had two great opportunities uh, at that. And instead of getting two points, got a foul. And that was fourth on Swanson. Second foul on Dayton this half. You take a look at it. There's a look at the easy shot, but it wasn't easy. It didn't go in. Follow in's a high percentage shot, and then they got the foul. Coming down with it was Stiebel. So it's Lone Tree's basketball. It stays at 2, 42-40 with about a minute now left to go. Pekos came down to visit with the guards as they brought the ball down as we go under a minute, changing the offense apparently. I think admonishing them to be a little careful about forcing, forcing it in underneath now. There's a good lead pass. It won't fall, however. Towering rebound and a foul from behind on Neil Forbes. He fouled Blair. All right, that's team foul number four on Lone Tree, which means that uh, Dayton will be shooting the rest of the ball game. But Next one, Forbes Norman. was standing behind Kruger. When the official pointed at Forbes, Kruger said, who, me? He thought he had another one of those. And that on Forbes is his first personal foul. 44 seconds left. Nelson handling the basketball. Anderson. It's Tom Cooney in the coach's son. Put up and it falls for Van Blair. That's his Hold first ball game. basket of this ball game. And it's a big one with a 42 all tie. The third time we've been nodded. Last time was at 30 and prior to that at 8. Well, Mark, there is no tomorrow. You've got an 8 minute 17 second season right now. He traveled. He being Phil Forbes, moved those feet before he put the ball down. And, of course, that's happened pretty consistently so far in the tournament. It's perhaps the most noticeable turnover we see. Cooney coming out and Swanson back, even yeah. with the four fouls. They wanted to get a shooter in for 13 seconds. Why they made that change? They had another natural timeout coming. Good thought. This is Swanson. Will they go for three? 
They will not. Nelson talking about shooters. Right on the money with his 24 point of the evening. There's the end of the quarter with the score. Dayton 44, Lone Tree 42. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Nelson. There's the guy that drives the bus. We mentioned that earlier. Darren Nelson, one on one he goes. Clark's running out, he got two. Gives Dayton the lead at 44 to 42. Eight minutes to go. Here's another angle on that Darren Nelson shot. Zap right down through the cords. Mark Zelich, eight minutes to a state championship for one of these two schools who's never had one. Three big field goals by Darren Nelson in that third quarter. He has a total of 24 points. Pekosh with 25 for the Lone Tree Lions. Matter of fact, Pekosh and Kruger scored 36 of the 42 points for Lone Tree. That's how powerful they have been. But Nelson has carried the load certainly for Dayton. They pulled Pekosh outside. He's top of the key there. Lone Tree outscored. Dayton 16-14 in that quarter. Trail by two, and the ball tipped out of bounds. They're going to give it to Dayton. Well, Dayton has a big opportunity right now. 44-42 is where it is. Lone Tree led by six on two occasions during that third quarter, but Dayton came back each occasion and now leaves. We'll have an all-tournament team and a state sportsmanship award, too, all after this game. Cleaner handling it on the far side. Tries it over the top of Pekosh. Intimidated a little bit, I think, and Kruger takes the rebound. Traveling Rattling again. Yep, Stiebel. So the turnover gives Dayton the basketball. They already have the lead. 7.26 left in this championship. Another to follow in 1A, Nashua and Grundy Center. Hoffmeister took the drink. Rockney Foreman puts his head in his hands. Hoffmeister batting 7.34 in his career. Now, they decide to pull it out. Wasn't a four corner. They were just trying to apparently to get him to change the defense. And it's almost stolen by people. Nelson controls. Gives it off to Anderson. He pumps the 18 footer. He had a hunch. Got a punch. Well, Emmett Cooney at that point was saying, oh no. Good shot. Sir. <laughs> Ross Anderson with 10. 46-42, it's four now. They go into Pekosh, who falls. Traveling will be called, and way. he uh, hit his head. No, he's going back this way. That's Pekosh who went down. Right. Now, he's the boy that had the bad ankle. Maybe they lost the ankle. No, Hoffmeister, the coach, is uh, coming out. Taking a look at him. He hit hard as he went down on his back. The ankle injury came against Kyoto in the district tournament. Andy Pekosh. He's jumped, don't talk, don't talk to me out here, sir. Excellent medical facilities here at Veterans Auditorium. Downstairs, the Drake University uh, stuff. You can see it right now. Watch number 54. See how he comes down. Was it an ankle or not? He's leaning back. There's the right foot touching down. And did it go out from underneath him? It slipped. It looked like his right foot slipped to me, Mitch. I may be wrong. They're rolling, rolling him over right now to get uh, a good look. And then he didn't hit his head as I thought he did. I think he caught it square on the flat of the back, which of course can jar you. But I don't think the head hit as I had thought possibly it may have. The staff of Dr. Harlan Hunter of the sports uh, clinic is here, and they're out of the court right now. They're tending to him. And again, uh, from where we're sitting, it looks pretty positive. We can see him shaking his head, and he's apparently being quizzed and talked to. All rights to the 1985 yeah, Iowa Boys State High School Basketball Tournament have been awarded by the Iowa High School Athletic Association to Turner Television Productions, Sioux City. No rebroadcast, videotape presentation, or other use of this telecast is permitted without the express written consent of William F. Turner, executive producer, Sioux City. Pekosh is up. Hey, he's walking off on his own power. It was a traveling violation, as Frosty suggested, so the ball's going to go over to Dayton. A lot of handshakes in the Dayton Tigers, incidentally. And I think we'll see Pekosh again, and perhaps uh, sooner than later. Because it's 46-42 right now, 6.52 left, a four-point spread. Dayton has the basketball and the lead. And that's all the time left in the ball game. Pekosh with 82 points is the leading scorer in this uh, tournament right now by about uh, 20. And I'll bet he's supposed to be the leading rebounder as well, if not the leading rebounder. Last year in 2A, Art Sadoff won both the scoring and the rebounding for Iowa Falls. Stiebel. Nothing happens. Ross Anderson with the rebound gives it to Nelson. Here comes Dayton. Stiebel draws the foul. 
And that's team foul number five, so the team from Dayton will be going to the line. Stiebel, as I said, came in and hit three straight in the opening game against Little Rock, and he really sparked them. Since then, however, it has come tough, come tough for the youngster. He also scored six in the Palmer victory. Gary Feldman is checking in a six foot three, 17 year old junior for Lone Tree. They're trying to put an offense together, apparently, with uh, Pekosh still on the bench. And interestingly enough, Stiebel, as a reserve, is the number three scorer on that team. Yeah. Darren Nelson. You know, I mentioned Darren Nelson at the free throw line is a guy that drives the bus. Not really. This team's school bus on the way to the Northeast Hamilton in the district actually lost two wheels off their school bus, being driven by assistant coach Jerry Kinder at the time. And fortunately, no one injured in that mishap, and they don't know why those cars came off, do they? Forbes, Neil Forbes. His second basket, 47-44, the difference is three. Nelson quickly into the front court. Swanson. The baseliner down to Fleener, looking in at Anderson. He's not open. Nelson changes his line. The left hand by Swanson. We've gone under six minutes. And the rebound picked up on the first bounce by Kruger and turned to Couch, and he then gives it to Phil Forbes. That's where you see it now, Couch hand. Neil Forbes, will he get two in a row? No, he will not. The follow-up is not good, but the foul is on Darren Nelson. But only team number three. Yeah. Three only number three. So we have a reversal of what happened in the first half. That's right. And those free throws in the first half kept Lone Tree in that ball game. The difference was four at halftime, and uh, six of the 26 points came off the free throw line, where none of Dayton's 30 did. There's a good look at Gary Feldman, six foot three junior. He was a reserve on the 84 team that was down here. Lost that opening. Can't ask when you go to the bullpen for much more than that, can you? 29 percent are from the line, too, Mitch. Of course, he hasn't fired that many. Clutch free throw. Wooden Chanel. Parks them both. 47 46. Pekosh is going to come back in. Yep, and that draws a roar from the uh, Lone Tree fans. We've got a timeout on the floor with the score, Dayton 47, Lone Tree 46. Now this word from your local station. Some of the guys having a little fun, or more correctly, some of the girls <laughs> having a little fun at the tournament. Sorry, honey. <laughs> well, 543. Yeah, you were thinking of the same thing, Mitch, with a one-point spread. And of course, uh, that just bodes excitement here down the stretch run to the final gun between these two ball clubs for the first Class A championship in Iowa history. And so with Pekos back in there right now, no excuses given and none will be asked down the stretch. Kruger has been silent in the third quarter. Scored 11-2-3. Has not scored here. That's Nelson trying it from the way long range and the rebound goes to Pekosh. Pekosh had 36 rebounds coming into this game. And that was tops in the tournament. He picked up and where he left off. It was a rebound when he got hurt. He came back in and got the first chance. So there's a chance to reclaim the lead as the ball goes into Pekosh. The lead is reclaimed. There's no way to stop that but once he gets that ball at 6-8. No. 27 points for Pekosh, 48-47. Dayton down by one. Dayton's ball. Swan the mismatch getting it to Nelson. Dayton has six, biggest man 6-4. Neil Forbes continues his chase of Darren Nelson. And that's been a long evening of pursuit. Ross Anderson going up and parking it beautifully. Anderson has a dozen. He's averaging 20, so he's well under his average. All grit, no quit on that one. He just decided he was going to take charge. So it's Dayton by one now, 49, 48. Into Kruger. The big guy misses it. The big right hand with a rebound. Parks the second one. Kruger's first scoring of the fourth quarter. He has a total of 13. Laudry has definitely decided now to go inside the rest of the way, apparently. 50 49. Well, with the Twin Towers, why not? Nelson is stripped of it, but fouled in the process by Neil Forbes. Forbes has had his work cut out for him. He's lost weight here tonight chasing that guy. 
but Neal has done Holman's work. He's been there more than not, but the shots have gone in. You'll see this when Darren Nelson's the man up in the air in the red suit to take in the drive. They fouled him on the, the way up. So here's a 62 percenter from the line. Shortstop in baseball, cross country, and a shared program over at Central Webster. Good athlete. 1,100 points in his career. 26 tonight. Change it to 27. Three in a row from the free throw line. Missed his initial attempt. The shot attempt by Forbes. Bill Forbes ventured into that lane, found it open. That's his third field goal. Big basket, 52-51. Back and forth. Lone Tree in the lead now. A moment ago, of course, it was the Stiebel. Uh, I stand correct. Yeah, Swansea giving the ball to Nelson. Look out. The rebound goes to Fleener, rejected beautifully by Kruger. Power intimidation. Just smothered it. And Forbes brings it into the front court. 3.40 left to go. Looking inside the Pekash. They're going to be a little bit more careful. Forbes will try two in a row. Doesn't happen. Kruger with a tip. Well, Kruger's come on to pick up the slot now. 15 for Kruger. 54-51. The difference is three. Lone Tree, which has led by as much as six back in the third quarter, but did not lead at the end of the third. Darren Nelson from about 17 and a half feet away. On the first bounce, it's picked up by Phil Forbes. Darren forced that a little bit, but he had a hand in his face, too. Up to count into Kruger, and somebody grabbed him. That somebody was Van Blair. That's his story. Fourth team foul on Dayton. Kruger will be going to the free throw line. And Kruger from the line is an 81 percent outstanding big, free throw shooter. This big guy got some ink in Sporting News National Magazine. The phone was ringing so much during the recruiting season, uh, Mark, that he told his folks uh, I was afraid to answer. If it's a man, tell him I'm not home. If it's a girl, tell him I'll be right there. <laughs> tell him. Huh? Sporting <laughs> News said so. Nothing happened on the uh, free throws you saw, and let's see. Bring it down in a hurry. The shot attempt is by Anderson. Got half of it. The follow up by Fleener. Big bucket. It is 54 53. The difference now is one. Lone Tree with the lead and the basketball. As we walk, look at Phil Forbes handle it. Getting around Nelson. Drops it to cousin Neal. Both teams have two timeouts left in this ballgame. Still working against that 2 3 zone. Apparently a play designated or an offensive set by Forbes as he held up the fingers. Lone Tree is wanting to get in close. Half of Ekash. He's got a hunch. Gets a punch. 29 for Andy Pekash having a big night. He had 33, however, in the Palmer win. 56-53. It's up to three again into Anderson over the top of Kruger. Right on the numbers. 14 for Anderson. And to our listeners and viewers, we want you to remember there are a, a three-point shot ring out there if we come down the wire. And as you can see, we're under two. 56-55. One-point difference. Lone tree. Unbeaten thus far. Top rated. Eliminated first round last year. Someone said they came here to right or wrong. Well, they wanted to get inside either Kruger or Pekais for the high percent shot, and they went both of them in there for the rebound. Actually, no sense for them to rush. And it is a team that's turned the ball over, traveling here four times tonight. You bet. You saw Darren Nelson reach out. He had a little larceny in his heart. Couldn't get away with it. Caught the things the ball. Neil Forbes gives it up to Cousin Phil. Darren was very Darren, incidentally, on that. He has played beautifully. They get it into Pekosh. Pekosh gets it in the hole. 31 for Pekosh. Now, does Dayton want timeout and a three-point shot? Apparently they do. Timeout on the floor with the score. Lone Tree 58, Dayton 55. Now this word from your local station.
Andy Pekaj, bad ankle and all, including a pretty severe fall that shook him up. Nevertheless, has responded here magnificently for lone three, 17 in the first half. He's come back with 16 so far in the second half, and right now lone three is out in front by 358 to 255. Todd Kruger has scored a 15, so between the two of them, they have 46 of the 58 points their ball club has scored, but so be it. That's the way it's planned to be when you've got people of that size and that talent playing down there. If it comes down to a three-point shot, Darren Nelson has tried during this year, seven out of 12, that's 58%. Swansea yet to score. Was he fouled? He was. He was. Out. Picks up his second personal foul, and you saw him two, jumping around. Zero coming through. Obviously Two. irritated at himself that he got a piece of Swan scene. That's Coach Hoffmeister right there. 66 and a half percent from the line, Swan scene. He's got to get the lid off in time. Scott Swanson's just a junior at the line. He's a scratch golfer, incidentally. No handicap. Coach says the best passer he's ever had. And boy, Swan scene just has had a problem in this one. Now, with 44 seconds, if he makes or misses, you get some interesting combinations with this three-shot possibility that our viewers haven't seen a lot of this year. There it is. He gets his personal lid off, 58-56. The difference is two, 42 seconds left to play. Makes you glad you came. The ball gets up the couch. Still in the backcourt. Phil Forbes trying to bring it across the equator. He does by getting it to Cooler near side the couch. They're going to let the air out, apparently, Nick, and see if they get a foul. They get it. It's from Fleener, and that'll send Kalt to the line. He's a 76% shooter looking for his first point here this evening. How about that? Well, 165 teams are called A, and we're 27 seconds away from somebody being uh, A of the A right now, the king of the hill. And here's a guy averaging six and a half. He got four in the Little Rock win. He picked up nine in the Palmer win. He'd trade all of those for a couple right now. Or would he? It doesn't fall. Anderson comes up out of the coaster to sweep the board with 20 seconds remaining. Two to tie it, three to win it. Timeout called by Dayton. The score, Lone Tree 58, Dayton 56. Now this word from your local station. the strategy huddle Dayton down two that's one the basketball one timeout left for Dayton two timeouts left lone three 58 56 they know they're going to have one possession mark three points to win it two points to tie it they're down by two what do you think they're going to do Nick? well that's a tough decision yeah, it but is. Darren Nelson is 58 percent from the three-point ring and Kumi I'm sure Kumi has made it clear to him exactly what he wants him to do as we come down under 20. Go for the higher percentage shot down there, but as Nick said, they've been able to pop it from long range as well. Looks like long range. Nope. It'll be a two-pointer. It's there by Nelson. 29 points for Nelson. He hits a big one with five seconds left to play. And now it's turn of Lone Tree to talk about strategy. Beautiful shot by Darren Nelson as he parked it from about 17 and a half feet, as best I could judge. And he has a total of 29 here tonight, and that was his biggest two so far. We are tied at 58. The last time we were tied was at 42 all. Well, if you're thinking overtime with five seconds to go, look at that strategy being mapped out out there right now. That's to the people that have the ball with five seconds to go the length of the court. Doug Hoffmeister.
They've got a big advantage. I don't think we can pick up the sound on that. They got a big advantage over the two big guys. One for sure they can get the inbounds pass probably high to the other big guy if they want to. And of course the last thing Dayton wants to do is foul anybody, so they're going to be playing it reasonably loose. We have already had three overtimes in this tournament this year. One of them, of course, a history making six overtime, Maple Valley. We're trying to pick up some of the discussion in the huddle. Evidently, we're having a little trouble doing so. At least we can't hear it up here. That's right. Maple Valley can't play a game without being in overtime, right, Trusty? <laughs> Boy, it seems like it. Uh, they won a six-overtimer from Northwood Kensett, and then they lost in single overtime. Didn't they play in overtime the last time they were in the tournament? Right. They played eight overtimes in their last three games here. Alden Birkenpass is wondering what it takes to win. <laughs> <laughs> here it oh, is. Yeah. Five seconds, 94 feet away. They get it in. The box starts. This is Couch. It would not have counted had it hit. That's the end of regulation time. With the score, Lone Tree 58, Dayton 58. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Overtime. That's been the hallmark of this tournament series in recent years. As Mitch said, we had a half a dozen of them last year. I think of three or four the year before that. We've had three overtime games here this year. And, of course, more games still to be played. And one more tonight. We have another six tomorrow. A year ago, in what was then A, Zering, Nesco, and Denver decided in overtime. And that one went to Denver 61-56 in overtime. In history, five times, now six, the state championship has been decided in overtime. Bruce Kalt with a free throw miss at about 20 seconds left to play with the score tied at 58. Now we're in overtime and the Tigers have the basketball at Swansea handling it. Goes over to Darren Nelson how he has sparkled here this evening. Well, he took the responsibility all himself he that last time. He certainly did. 29 points is what he's chalked up so far. They each get an extra overtime. Uh, re uh, extra timeout in overtime. <laughs> each team received an extra timeout for the overtime. Right. This is Nelson. Being hounded in there. Top of the key. They go to Fleener. Back out to Nelson. Anderson against Kruger. Surely they're not going to try and play it down for one shot, do you think? You wouldn't think so. I would think not. They're simply waiting. Anderson will try it from 17. Perfect. It's been a while since Dayton's had the lead. Anderson makes it 60 to 58. We come down to two minutes left. Class A championship. That's what they're battling. Kruger trying to tie it. Cannot. Anderson rebounds. Well, they could get a little conservative now. Down to 145. You can see the countdown on your screen. Nail biting time. 
Cleaner passes it in, throws it away. I don't know. I think he intended that for Blair. Maybe it was for Anderson, but it went our skew, and this is Forbes. The door is open as it goes to Pekosh. He goes up over the top of Anderson, and Pekosh has just picked up his 33rd point. That's as many as he scored in the Palmer game. And we are tied again. Darren Nelson tried to untie it. We'll jump it. You saw Kruger from behind. He's tall enough to get away with that as he tied up Blair, who was also tied up from the front, I think, by Pekosh, but it'll be Kruger who will jump against Blair. And a big height advantage right here to Kruger. 6-3 for Blair. Kruger is 6-8, and he can get off his feet. 111 left to play. We're tied. Tip it to Count. Count with the ball. Heads west at Des Moines in overtime. 1A championship waiting in the wings. Nashua and Grundy Center. Won't they just bring it to you? Well, this is the kind of a shame somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. Count drops it underneath for Kruger. He was fouled by Blair, his fourth personal foul. And Kruger, 81 percent of goes to the line. He has only made one out of three, however, here so far this evening from the free throw line. Blair really didn't have a lot of chance right there, as uh, I think it was uh, that's Emmett Cooney, the Dayton coach you're looking into right there. Kruger at the line, the big honor roll student. His mom, incidentally, is a hairdresser in Lone Tree. Gives the coach and the team their haircuts. Cool as a cucumber as he hits that big one. And that makes it 61 to 60. One. One. And now the second time around. Is right cool. Around. cool. People right. respond. Darren Nelson is the man that took charge before. Remember? You bet we do. From the baseline, 16 feet away. The rebound goes to Cooper. He gives it to Kout. In turn to Forbes. They'll have to foul now, probably. In the backcourt, Kout feeds it up to Neil Forbes. Down to 29 seconds. Over on the far side. Who do they want to foul? Pretty obvious. Maybe two. It will be. That'll be a two-shotter, probably. Fleener with that deliberate effort, and as a result, now, that hurt get two. to give up the two-shot foul right there because there's a two-point lead. Keep in mind, there is a three-point shot in this uh, boys' high school basketball, however. And there's 22 seconds left to play, and with a guy like Darren Nelson around, don't count him out. So Kout, who missed a significant free throw with about 20 seconds left in regulation time, gets it back here again to see if he can improve on it, but he'll be getting two tries as a result of that deliberate foul. Anderson untied it here in overtime with a basket, making it 60 to 58. Then Cougar missed a shot. Pekosh, however, came back with a shot, tied it at 60 all. And then Cougar with two free throws on the one and one has now built up a 62-60 lead and count can increase it depending on his success at the free throw line. trying desperately to bring you some audio from inside of the huddle at Dayton to give you the sense of urgency and feel and strategy that's going on and we apologize for the fact that we cannot at least I can hear it up here but you can see a very animated coach communicating as thoroughly as he can but he's setting two strategies Mark one if Count makes one free throw another strategy if he makes both free throws a third strategy if he makes no free throws of course they want to ice Bruce Count now, Dayton is out of timeouts. Lone Tree still has one. And the lad going to the line, Brute Kaut, quarterback on their state runner-up football team, shortstop on the baseball team. His dad's the banker in Lone Tree. He can put this one in the bank right now. He was a starter in the tournament last year. Of course, Neil Forbes was a starter. So was Pekosh and Phil Forbes and Todd Kruger, all coming back, hoping to make up for what happened last year. Now, let's watch Kaut. All right, now, now the fact that it was a deliberate two-shot foul wouldn't make any difference. He would have had the one-and-one one anyway. A big free throw. This, this puts in the four-point spread. Money in the bank if he gets this one. Clean. Kaut has scored two points. That's it. And they've made four big free throws in the overtime. That, and that's been the difference. The shot attempt, and they're going to put it on Nelson. Nelson in desperation, obviously, doing what he can, trying to do what he can. 
Yep. He's tough. Oh, he's <laughs> I'll be amazed if we don't see him again on the all-tournament team in a little while. No question about it. 15 seconds left. They've got to foul somebody again. And actually have to do it in a hurry if they're going to do it. That's Anderson slapping it away from Pekosh, and Anderson has his second personal foul. So Pekosh has a chance to drive the nails even deeper in overtime here in our first Class A championship ever. And Pekosh goes to the line. He has had 33 previous points. He had 33 in the Palmer game. He scored 24 at Little Rock. He scored 33 here tonight. He has swept the boards for a host of rebounds. He's been a tower of strength for Lone Tree, no question about it. And he's been outstanding from the free throw line, I might add. A total of 34 now. And there is a coach who is very grateful for this win. It came hard. Two ball clubs who really gave us a great show here tonight in this Class A attraction. Pekash with that left hand for the second time. It doesn't happen this time, but he doesn't need it. Five seconds left as Swan Seen puts the long one short. Pekash takes it with no time remaining. That's the end of the ball game in overtime with the score Lone Tree 65, Dayton 60. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Back over the win, his first championship and his second trip. Shaking hands and of course greeting his wife. Happiness is called winning, and he won a big one here. A perfect season. Lone Tree wins it 24-0 with a big win over a battling Dayton Ladies ball club. Let's go courtside for the award presentations. To the top two teams in the state of Iowa in 1985, Class A, two members of the Board of Control of the Iowa High School Athletic Association. To my left is Bob Schmidt, the superintendent of schools at Jefferson. Next to Bob is the current chairman of the Board of Control, the principal at Ankeny High School, Larry Parr. Certainly for our runner-up team, it's been an unforgettable season, a tremendous, tremendous week. They'll never forget it. How about a big hand for our runner-up, 1985, Coach Emmett Cooney and the Dayton Tigers. They definitely are number one, the undefeated state champions, the Lone Tree Lions and Coach Doug Hockmeister. a very important part of each state tournament, and it's been this way for many years now, is the presentation of the Sportsmanship Award. It is sponsored by the Iowa Broadcasters Association, the Iowa Newspaper Association, and the Iowa Boys High School Athletic Association. The Sportsmanship Award is voted on by the members of the media, and uh, here to make the presentation, Larry Edwards, Vice President and General Manager of WMT Radio, who is the current president of the Iowa Broadcasters Association, along with Dave Norris, the publisher of the Marshalltown Times Republican and the current president of the Iowa Newspaper Association, Mr. Norris. It's a privilege for the Iowa Newspaper Association and the Iowa Broadcasters Association to make this presentation. The Sportsmanship Award is a prestigious one 
one in which the entire school and community can feel some pride. It measures not only the good sportsmanship of the players on the court, but also the fans in the stands and the bench. And so tonight we're proud to present the Class A Sportsmanship Award from the Empire Conference Hedrick High School. Ladies and gentlemen, ever since last Monday morning at 10.30, when the A started playing, the media, the press, the radio, the television covering this tremendous show have been keeping tabs on the performances for an all-tournament team. History being made in a four-class tournament, then this is the first Class A all-tournament basketball team. To help honor these young people with the presentations, will you welcome a good friend to the young people of Iowa, Governor Terry Branstead. The all-tournament team, Class A, Doug Gamble from Hedrick. All-tournament Darren Nelson Dayton. <laughs> On the all tournament team from a school that has only 17 boys, but one of them is all tournament, Bruce Aiden from Palmer. <laughs> all tournament 1985 Class A, Ross Anderson from Dayton. And the captain of the all-tournament team, meaning he got more votes than anybody else, Andy Peckhouse from Lone Tree. All right, the always exciting awards presentations that are made here, the all-tournament team preceded by uh, the Sportsmanship Award, and of course that in turn preceded by the Championship Award uh, presentations as Lone Tree uh, wins it out here with a perfect 24-0 record. We'll be back in a moment after this pause for station identification. 